Hello and welcome to Tech Bytes. Today we are going to explore the wonders of OneNote, which happens to be my favorite Microsoft feature. I have used this for years and I am hoping to be able to convince you that it is a wonderful feature and get you hooked as well. And so we are going to get started right away, jump right in because this is normally a half day, even up to a full day training. And I'm going to put as much as I can into a one hour session. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me go ahead and share my screen and bring over my PowerPoint. And I am Prestine Parton. I am the Director of Technology here at Southwest Regional Education Cooperative here in Deming. So what is OneNote? OneNote is a digital notebook and it automatically saves and syncs your work as you are all of your notes as you are working you can type your information you can insert information from other apps and web pages you can take handwritten notes you can draw your ideas you can record there's so much you can do with one note so if you will imagine your bookshelf with binders sitting on the shelf and with a traditional binder then you open up that binder and you have your tabs to separate your different categories. And then in between your tabs, you have the different pages and you can put many different pages within that binder. So as, as you think about your OneNote notebook, it is a digital three ring binder. So I want you to always refer back to that physical binder and your digital binder. So with OneNote, you have the same divider tabs as you would in a three ring binder. They're called sections in OneNote. So you have your little tabs across the top here and unlimited pages. So you have pages listed here with your full page in view here. So with a regular three ring binder, of course, you are limited to the size of the binder before you have to go and pick up another three ring binder to put the rest of your material in. So another plus to a digital binder, unlimited size. So now that you have the idea, you have visualized a, a real three ring binder and your virtual three ring binder. So we're gonna take a deeper dive into OneNote and Microsoft has two different versions, OneNote and OneNote for Windows 10. And of course, they have to make it a little difficult because on your computer, if you have both of them, the icons, they say there's a, a slight variance. I personally don't see it. Maybe it's my old eyes, but they look the same to me. <laughs> but Microsoft is working on a merger of the two which is a good thing because I use both of them because there are features in both of them that I like. And so I go back and forth between the two and you're going to notice that in this training because I will show you things that I like in both of them. And I am hoping that Microsoft will merge the, the two features um, together in a very good combination so that I don't lose features that I use a lot out of both of them, but it will be nice to have them together so that I'm not jumping back and forth between the two different apps. I am including in the PowerPoint that I have posted on the website some different um, resources for you. These are all links and that will take you to their website with information on these subject areas. Now, when you are working in your OneNote, you, you do not have to worry about saving because as you are typing or putting things on those pages, it's automatically saving everything. And the really nice part about this is you don't have to have internet. So when you are working in OneNote and you are somewhere where you don't have Wi-Fi, you don't have any type of internet service, then you can continue working. And once you get into an area where you do have service, then it will sync up to the cloud and all of your work is going to be 
saved. This was um, quite helpful in here in Deming whenever we did our one-to-one -one project because a lot of our students did not have access to the internet, but they could come to school, they could have all of their information in OneNote, they could go home, they could do their assignments, they could do their journal entries, they could do whatever they needed to do. Once they got to school, it would sink back up into the cloud and their access to their teachers, everything would be there. So really a nice feature there because you don't have to have internet to access it. It's right there on your, on your computer or your device. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop out of this and let's go ahead and just see what this looks like. So if you have Microsoft 365, then you already have a, a version of it in your account. But if you don't, then you can go to um, OneNote.com and you can actually sign up for a OneNote account. So you can sign up right here or you can sign in if you have some type of account. This could be an Xbox account. This could be an Outlook.com account, anything of that nature. You can um, sign in with that account and be able to use OneNote. And then if you do have um, Microsoft 365 for your work or school account, then you can log in. And when you go to your app launcher, you have OneNote available right here in your apps. So when you do activate that and you click on OneNote or you sign in to OneNote, then you are going to get to a screen such as this. Of course, being my favorite, <laughs> my favorite feature, I already have a bookshelf of notebooks and you can toggle between a tile view or a list view, depending on what you prefer. So, this is my recent, so I might go back and forth in my notebooks all the time. And uh, did I mention it's my favorite feature? <laughs> I use OneNote a lot, both here at work and even at home on my personal account. I use OneNote all the time. They have added a favorites button, so you can use um, the ones that you use a lot, you can favorite. And uh, let me go back here. When you hover over these, you can see these stars and you can tap on them to add them to your favorites. So that way you can go into favorites and find your notebooks quite easily when you start building up quite a few notebooks. Um, at the REC, we have several districts that we work with. And so I actually have notebooks with different districts. And so it's easier for me to favorite them so I can get to those diff different districts easier, but I can have them all within my one area without having to log into different um, accounts. I can go right into OneNote and have all those different accounts in, in one setting. The next tab right here says my notebooks. So these are all the notebooks I have created. So I have those. You can see a little tab down here where it says show more. So it'll go on with all of the notebooks that I have. Shared with me are going to be notebooks that other people have created. And this one actually has different documents. So if they've created them and shared them with me, they would show up here. Class notebooks are a little bit different than your regular OneNote. They have the same features, but then it's like OneNote on steroids. It's gonna have some more features. This is going to be a, a training of its own in two weeks. And this is great for classrooms or departments and um, building wide uh, notebooks. So this is a fantastic staff or teacher and classroom notebook that has some great features there. So those are your tabs up here that are in your notebook. So you also have an area right here which says new notebook. And so if you click on that, you give your notebook a name, you hit create and it 
instantly has started a new notebook for you. It is that easy. It slowed us down this morning in our training, so I'm not going to go ahead and create a notebook, but I will take you through the different notebook pieces as if we were creating one, but I don't want to slow us down like it did this morning. So that's what it looks like online. I'm even going to open one up for you. Actually, I already have one open. Oops. Put that little guy right back in there. So this is a training notebook. And you can see right here, this is my bookshelf. And so I have a list of notebooks that I have put on my bookshelf. If I decide that it gets too full, maybe there's a notebook that I no longer use. Maybe I used it for, uh, in, in my case, I help with a lot of different events. And then when that event is over, I no longer need it on my bookshelf. You can always right click on so many things on the internet and get secret menus. So I could right click and get some um, different menus. Now I'm thinking of the desktop app, sorry. But you can um, hide, men hide notebooks so that your bookshelf doesn't get quite so full. But this again is the online version and you have those two desktop versions that I showed in the PowerPoint. But I do wanna show you the difference between OneNote and OneNote for Windows 10. So in OneNote, it, this is a desktop app as well as um, OneNote for Windows 10 can also be a desktop app. So OneNote is part of Microsoft 365. So if that's what you're seeing. The section tabs are horizontally and the page tabs along the side. There, there's a, okay, I, I'm, I kind of have a little bit backwards there, sorry. OneNote for Windows 10 is the one that is pre-installed on all of your computers. And so that one is built right into your new devices when you buy computers. And so it's already pre-installed. If for some reason you have uninstalled it on your computers, you can always go to the Microsoft Store and put it right back on. This one looks a little bit differently because the section tabs are vertically on the left, like this one, and the page tabs are immediately to the right. And so you'll see that this online version mimics OneNote for Windows 10. And I need to update this particular slide because Microsoft has switched out and now they are mimicking OneNote for Windows 10 on their Office 365 version. Um, you will notice that this has a smaller ribbon. It doesn't have that full-blown ribbon in here. But you can um, switch it out. So you have the simplified ribbon and you have the classic ribbon, which is more of like your Word, um, Excel, all of the Microsoft products have this more classic ribbon. So you do have those options where you can switch it out. And so this is part of that piece where Microsoft is merging the two versions of OneNote together so that you can make that choice between that. You can also choose whether you want that ribbon to show or if you want it to hide and then you can just hover over it and bring that ribbon down. I'm kind of old school, I like that ribbon to show, so I have that going ahead and always showing. But you can switch between the ribbon and you can make those choices of if you want it to show or not. And on OneNote, it can be stored locally on your hard drive, so you can have that version right on your computer. But with OneNote for Windows 10, it is um, a version that lives only in the cloud. And so everything always syncs back up to the cloud. And then when you're online, everything is there. You work on it um, through that app as well on your computer, but it isn't storing it locally on your computer. The OneNote version is more customizable. And that's why I'm hoping that those particular uh, features are what Microsoft is looking at to incorporate so that all of those features are coming to the online version. 
because there's so much you can do. And I will be showing you that as well. Now, also on this um, page that I have open in OneNote, I have OneNote for Mac, OneNote for the web, iPad, iPhone, even Android. Those links that I have in my PowerPoint that I showed you um, earlier, those are uh, links for all of this information. So you'll be able to go straight to the site that gives you all of this information. And so don't think that you're missing out on anything. You will have that information as well. But I do want to show you um, the desktop app and how similar everything looks. And then I'll also show you some of those differences as well. So I'm going to show you the OneNote for Windows 10. And again, it, you're going to see that it looks so very, very much like this online version. So to kind of take a look at this online version, and here's the desktop app of that. And you can see how very, very similar it is. Again, you've got those sections or the like, if you'll picture that physical binder, three ring binder, those tabs, the sections are right there and the pages are right next to it. So that's going to be your OneNote for Windows 10. And again, your navigation right here are all of your notebooks. Now in this desktop app, you can add a notebook right here. So just like you could online, you can add notebooks in this desktop app by just clicking on this little plus sign. And then you can add the notebook name. If you have more than one account, you can choose which account you want to put this in from the desktop app. So again, you don't have to switch accounts, sign out and sign in. You just switch um, accounts right here, and then it will probably ask you for your password then, but you can do it right in the app right here. You don't have to close the app and open it um, differently. So you do have um, that little bookshelf it, where it says more notebooks. So if I wanted to add notebooks that I, that I have, but I haven't placed them on this little bookshelf, I can put more notebooks right here and I can search for different notebooks that I have out here that I just haven't brought to that bookshelf. So I can do that here. I can also add more of my accounts that I have if I wanted to have some of those other notebooks coming in here that are not already um, a um, linked to an account. I can do that from here as well. All right, so that is OneNote for Windows 10. And you see that right up here, distinguishing it from the other one. And now I'm going to show you the, the OneNote. And I have this one in a gray format just so I can keep them apart. I'm a very visual learner, so I have to have these color signals that will help me identify them. And so this is OneNote. So this one to me is more appealing. I like to have my tabs across the top. And so you see the tabs are up here, the sections as they're called here. And then my pages are along the side. And you can go into the settings and you can put the pages on either the left hand or the right hand side, whichever you prefer. But I like to have them separated. To me, it's easier and not as confusing as having them side by side. For me, I, I just get confused with, with them side by side. That's just a me thing. So this version is the one that has more um, customization. And this is the one that you can also access right on your computer. So this one is preferred by me. And a lot of people do like this one. They almost got rid of this version and stuck with the one that you saw here. And again, this is the one that's similar to the Office 365 version. And I guess enough people um, posted in the forums and their feedback so that they did not actually get rid of this version. And so that, that just goes to show that Microsoft actually does look at the feedback, they listen to the forums, and it, it's nice to, to see that they, they do respond to that kind of information. But I do like the, the tabs across the top. Um, this is, again, the bookcase here. And you can look at this in two different ways. 
this little pin here, I have pinned my bookcase up here so that I can look at my bookcase and go back and forth in between my bookcases or bookcases, sorry, <laughs> my notebooks. And the drop down arrows open up my books. So I have notebooks here that I can open up and I can see all my sections. I can flip through them quite easily and look at my pages and I can zip them back up. So I like having them available like that. If I unpin it, this is the default version. So in a default version, you have this little drop down here that allows you to look at your notebooks. And again, you can add a notebook here. You can open other notebooks just like you could before, but it's just not as visible. And so if you don't have but one or two notebooks, this is probably a more preferred view. But because I have so many and I bounce around between a lot of my notebooks, I generally tend to go with this view. It's again, a personal preference. And I like that they give you those options so that you can look at different things. All right, but I, I kind of wanted to show you also in this one because there were more tabs across the top. You can kind of see where, how the tabs look when there's more in here. So you can see all the tabs across the top and then of course the pages along the side. And as I mentioned, it's an indefinite amount of pages. You can go as many as you want and you can see I have so many pages I have to scroll, but you can make sub pages and be able to zip those up when you're not needing them so that, so that you can get to the pieces that you need. And you can also move pages around. So if I wanted to move this up here, I could just drag them right into place so I can move things around quite easily. All right. So every time you start uh, an account and you start brand, brand new into OneNote, you get a generic notebook. And that is um, what you see here when you see Prestine at work. That is going to be your very first notebook that you start off with. And I always encourage people, start off with something like a hobby or even your if you're at home, you could start off with maybe your um, your bills or something to where you can get things organized just to get familiar with OneNote. So at home, I have one for my, for my bills and my kids stuff and things like that. But then I went on to recipes and then I went to my hobbies. So I have quilting notebooks and now I'm into crafting and I've got a bazillion things of crafting. And so there's different things that you can have. And, and that's how I got used to it. I, I just started practicing with things and it really made a world of difference so that as I started doing that, I started thinking of ways I could use it in my professional life. And then it just exploded and I don't know, maybe got out of control, but this is my world. Everything is in my notebooks. And so I really, really um, use this a lot. So as I mentioned before, you can take notes, whether you're just typing, you can um, pull things over from different websites, things like that. You can add things in, whether they're typed, handwritten, whatever. I'm still old school. When I'm in a staff meeting, I still enjoy handwriting my notes, but then I will turn around and scan those notes and add them right into my uh, OneNote. So I wanted to show, share with you how you could do that. So if I added a page, and remember how we could just add add a, a notebook, add everything. It's always just a plus sign somewhere. So if I wanted to add a section and tab, there's a plus sign right here. I could just add it, a tab, and we call it my stuff. And we'll just practice in this area. So I have a brand new tab, no pages behind it yet, except for this one untitled page. And so I can start adding pages to my three ring binder. So if I wanted to insert pages in here, again, as I had mentioned before, I could just type away and start doing things this way. If I was on a tablet, I could write on here. I could do different things. But if I wanted to attach a file that I had scanned in, I could 
come right here under insert and file attachment. And I could find something that I wanted to attach. So let's see, I'm going to find something that's not too terribly big. Let's see. I always manage to grab something that is too large and it takes forever. So I'm going to grab this document right there and I'm going to say insert. Now it's going to ask me if I want to attach just the file or do I want a printout? Well, I have this habit of naming things so similarly that I have to open things, you know, three or four of them to figure out which one is the right one. And so I usually do a printout. And what this is, is a snapshot of what that file actually is. So it's a picture of the file. And so it's going to place on this page the file itself, and it's going to show me a picture of that file. So I can't do anything with this. It's just a picture. So I can't change the words or anything like that, but I can see if it's the file that I need. So if this is the file that I need, then I can open it up. If it's not, I can go on to the next one and find the right file. So I can give it a title. Now, it, it took the first things that I typed and gave it a title of its own. But generally, if I hadn't typed right here, it would take the title of the file and put it up here. But I can always change it. can change it as often as I need to, whatever I need to do. And it's also listed on my pages over here as well. And so I can easily change that anytime I needed to. And then what is really nice is whenever I open up this file from my OneNote, and if I make some changes to it and save it, it's, it's all staying within OneNote, it will tell me that my document no longer my printout no longer matches my file. So it even tells me there's been a change and it gives me a little warning so that I can update my printout. So that makes it nice so that I know there's a change in there. So that's the difference between a file printout and that file attachment. Spreadsheets are really nice as well because when I add a spreadsheet, um, I can either add a new one, which will open up just a blank Excel spreadsheet right here, or I can bring in an existing spreadsheet. And let's see if I can find, let's see, let's see. There's one that I used for training a couple of weeks ago. Now it's again, do I wanna just attach the file? Do I wanna insert it as a spreadsheet? or if there was a chart or table, I could just bring the chart or table in. So there's some options here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, attach the file. And you can see that it's just the file all by itself. If I right click on that file, then I have the option of inserting it as the printout again, or I can even select what I want to display out of that file. So maybe it's a huge Excel spreadsheet with lots of worksheets and things. I can select which of those worksheets I want to display. I have lots of choices here. I know that this is fairly, fairly small. So I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to go ahead and insert it as a, as a printout. And there you see it kind of printing there. And so now it's showing me the worksheet that I last had open. And so there it's given me that information. So that was one of the worksheets that I had open. If I go into it again, uh, let's see, I'm gonna remove that printout and I'm going to tell it, select what to display. And I want it to show a data page. And I may not have chosen the best file in the world to try this on, but now I have one of the pages in this file that had data. I can actually edit this 
from right here. So there's an edit button and I can actually work on this worksheet right there without even opening the whole file. So that's kind of a nice, nice thing right there. So that's kind of neat with Excel in there. Um, I can add, go ahead and go to a new page. I can add um, pictures. I can do a screen clipping. So maybe I have um, a website open that I have a, uh, something I want to clip off of that um, website that I can want to clip and bring into my page. I can do that. So maybe I'm doing some research. I take a screenshot and bring it over here and put it right in. I can do pictures. I can go online and even search for something. So I can look for that time of the day when I just really am craving chocolate to get me through my day and I can choose a picture and insert that so it'll do a web search for me and I can bring that right in. I can go for online videos and do searches. I can even go to a video address. So if I wanted to put in a specific web address, I can do that. Now, here's something really, really nice about this. If I wanted, oops, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel on that. If I wanted to put in a YouTube or TikTok video, I can do that. All you do is you go to that online video and you put in that address. Not only will it put the address and everything in there, you can play it right in that page. Try doing that with a three ring binder. So you can't actually do that with a three ring binder. So you can actually play it right in the page. You don't have to go to the website or anything. You can do it right here. So that is really nice. And they just added the TikTok feature very, very recently, um, just over the summer, they did that. So that is super nice with the online video part. You can add links. And so this can be to another page in this notebook. It can be a page in any of your other notebooks, or it can be an ad, a website address. So if I wanted to go to our Tech Bytes page, I could go and I could pull up that website. And so here's our um, YouTube channel. And so I'm going to take that address and copy it. And I'm going to put it right in here. And there's my link. So I can put links to anything in here. If, if I wanted to do um, if I wanted to do a link to that page that I just showed you about playing the video on the page, I could do that because I know it's under miscellaneous and it's my YouTube and TikTok page and I can say okay. And now if I click on this, it's going to take me to that page. So I can do links in multiple ways. So that's a nice feature. You can also record audio and or video right here in your page. Again, something you can't do with a three ring binder. This is super nice if you are, let's say it's a student that is um, in a classroom and they are wanting to record a lecture, or if it's a student who struggles with, let's say math, and they wanna record the teacher demonstrating how to solve a complex problem, they could record this right in their classroom notebook and be able to review it and go over those steps and be able to um, use it as a study tool. And so they can do lots of different things there. Another key feature with that video, especially the audio piece, is, let me find that one. If you're recording audio and typing at the same time, taking your notes, it actually is recording in the video where you are taking those notes so that when you play back the video, it will highlight the notes 
that you it's associating with at the time frame in the video. So it's associating your note taking with the time frame in the video. I hope that makes sense. But it connects those two together. Your note taking with the time in the video. So that to me is amazing. Um, this is something that is not available in the uh, OneNote for Windows version is page templates. And this is something I really hope that they keep whenever they merge. Um, and I'm going to bring the other one back over real fast just to give you that comparison. So in this version, oh, it's still, see the little circle, it's syncing our our pages, our versions. If it's slow in doing so, you can do a right click. Remember I told you that right click has those secret menus behind it. I can tell it, sync it now. I'm in a hurry, sync it now. <laughs> I wanna see this. And so it will start that syncing process for you. And then you can see it's syncing there. This is also syncing right up to the cloud. So your online version is syncing as well so that you have it everywhere that you have that one note, whether it be a tablet, your phone, what have you. So if I go in and out, of course it's gonna be slow because I'm in training and I want it to be faster. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and make a new page on this side. Okay, so if I come in here, and I go into, into the, the view area, I can change the page color or I can have ruled lines. And this is really handy when you're doing this on a tablet and you're handwriting notes, because then you can um, give yourself lines. And I, changing that color didn't help for that purpose, did it? <laughs> so I can make lines and I can, make them wider or narrower, depending on how I like to write. I can even do graph paper. And if I'm doing um, math, sometimes this is um, helpful for math because I can do those that graph paper. But that's it as far as my paper choices in OneNote for Windows 10. However, when I'm in OneNote, then I have my page templates here. And I'm going to open that up here on the side. And this gives me a whole world of things that I can do. So I could do things such as lecture notes. Here's my homework and the topic of today and important facts. And then I can even, you know, continue taking my notes on top of all of these little bullet points. Um, there's various formats here. Here's different questions that I might have that I won't need to look up. Uh, it just has some different formats there. Math and science class, different things that they might have, formulas and theorems. I can also go into um, different sizes. So if I wanted a postcard size, it's already formatted for a postcard size. If I wanted um, a college rule sheet, it's hard to tell, but that it has college ruling on it. If I wanted a small grid, if I wanted a green background, these are all set. Um, my, there's business ones here. So if I wanted for my business meeting, I have an informal meetings notes. I have a um, project overview. So they have lots of templates in here that I love, love. And I like the decorative ones. So I like things like, um, dots or maybe some stripes on the side. I like stationery. So there's lots of ways to personalize my notebook to make it more my style. So this, this gives it a chance to be personal for myself. So I really, really hope that they don't take this away because like I said, I go back and forth between the two because once it's here, and it syncs, now it's going to be on the other page, even though it doesn't offer it in Windows, Windows 10, uh, the OneNote for Windows 10. Once it syncs, it's there. So I can add it here 
and go into the other version and it'll be there too. So I love this feature. Um, you can also add different stickers. Let me get rid of some of this. I can put some stickers in and just again, personalizing it just to make it more your own. Those are kind of ugly, aren't they? <laughs> and then there's another set of stickers. It looks like this one has to download. So I'm gonna go ahead and save time and take that out. So you have some different things there. Um, you have a draw function where you can, especially on tablets and I, you know, iPads and various tablets, you have some nice features there that will open up as well. But if you're very good with a mouse, you can even draw in here with your mouse. You can highlight. So if you have some text, you can highlight. So maybe um, you have brought over something, um, an article or something, and you can highlight that article. Uh, if I go in here, I'm just going to bring this one for as an example, because this is a screenshot, so it's just a picture. So I can highlight on different things. I can change the color of the highlight. Um, you can change the color and the thickness. You bring that up. So you can you know, really personalize that a lot. Um, you can even draw with your finger when you have a tablet, if you don't have a stylus. You have various shapes that you can add in there. Um, you can even do an ink to shape. So I don't think this worked earlier when we did this, but if you're like me, oh, let me. If you are using a stylus or your finger, and um, I'm gonna try something real fast because I have a touch screen down below. I'm gonna try it. No, it's not gonna do that. So, sorry. Oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Grabbed the wrong thing when I was trying to bring it back up. You can draw a circle. Let's see if I can get that going here. You can draw a circle, which love my circles, don't you? And you can say ink to shape and it will put it back into a circle. You can draw your squares and it will, hey, there it worked. Now it worked. <laughs> Let me try my circle again. See if I can, there. So it will actually correct your shapes so that your things look a little nicer. And so that is a really nice feature. You even have an ink to math. So you can write out an, an equation. Oh wait, I'm not doing so good. There it is. It's a little trickier with a mouse, <laughs> but you can see the idea here that you can write it out and it's putting it into a text version. And then when you insert it, now I have that in here as um, a more readable format for the teacher to grade. So you can actually do ink to math as well. I wanna make sure I haven't forgotten anything up here before I move on. I get real excited. Okay, I want to cover this really quickly before we run out of time. I'm telling you this could be a half day or full day training. That's what I used to do when we were doing these face to face. Um, I want to share with you um, this piece. If you are um, using Microsoft's Outlook app, and you have something on your calendar for a meeting, you can go into meeting details and you can pull that meeting and you can choose a meeting from different days. You can pull that meeting. So I pulled this from September 7th and 
if I wanted to see the whole message, I could actually expand this and it would bring the whole invitation and message and everything in here. And you can bring it right in here into your page. And then you could expand and see all the participants that that invite went to. And as you start taking the, the notes, maybe this person um, did not attend and you, you know, this person, this is my assistant, so I'm going to pick on him. Late. You can make your notes there. He's not late usually, so I'm just picking on him. And then you can start taking your notes for the meeting. Then you can turn around and email this page to everyone in the meeting if you wanted to uh, provide the meeting notes to them. So that's kind of a neat feature there. And before we go, have you ever been with your laptop somewhere and you're doing some, something on there and it says, print this record, print this page for your record and you are nowhere near a printer. And you're thinking, oh, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna save this? You can print to OneNote. So if you're on a web page, and let's bring a web page up. And let me find, let's say we're right here and you're trying to print. So you go up here and you say print. And you go to your destination where it lists all your printers. You cannot see it, it's on my other screen and it's not going to let me bring it up. <laughs> so my, my computer is sometimes kind of strange, but it will list your different printers and I'm gonna get my mouse back up here. And so it will list your different printers. There's my office printers and everything, but it also lists OneNote. OneNote for Windows 10, OneNote desktop. I have both of my um, both of my versions on my computer, so it will list OneNote in your printer area. And so once you select that, it will bring up a window that says, great, which notebook do you want it in? Which section do you want it in? And do you, is there a particular page or do you want a new page? And so you literally print to OneNote. And so when you print to OneNote, please know that this is going to be a picture. So it's going to be a picture. It's not going to be something that you can click on. So I'm gonna show you this one. This is a page off of an internet site. And what I did was I did a copy and paste and I put this into a page just doing a copy and paste off of a web page and then I can clean it up with the things I don't want I can take it off but more importantly all of the links will work but here's one more trick that you can do let me bring up my website again my internet stuff so as an example I'm going to go into let's see cancel that guy I'm going to go to, let's see, I'm going to go to my Tech Bytes page. This is our Southwest REC Tech Bytes. And let's say that I wanted to have some of this information on one of my pages. I can, again, I'm going to right click because remember that secret menus in there. I could print or I have OneNote Web Clipper. And when I click on that, it is telling me I have all these options. So I, this is telling me it right away is doing a full page. It's telling me where the website is and here's the full page, but I could select a, just a piece of that page or I could if it was just one article on that page, I could choose an article, I could bookmark, and then it's telling me, okay, and where do you want it? And so I click on this, which notebook, and let's go ahead and put it in 
this training notebook. And what section do you want it in? I want it in miscellaneous. And when I click on that, I say clip. And it's doing its thing. It's clipping the page. It's successful. All right. So I am going to go in here. And it says it's in miscellaneous. I'm gonna to go to my untitled page. No, I'm not, I'm gonna to go to, <laughs> I have to find it now. And it may have gone online first. I haven't used the clipper in a while, so I, I apologize. Let me go back to my internet. There it is. And so it has clipped that page for me and stuck it right into my notebook for me. It tells me my website, so I could click and go back to the website, but there is my page. This is really helpful if you're a teacher and you find the perfect thing for this unit that you're gonna do in two months. Of course, in two months, you're not gonna be able to find it again, right? So you can save it to OneNote and then when that unit comes up, you already have some of the resources that you have been looking for. So this is a really, really great way to be able to do this. So that is a fabulous way to print right to OneNote. All right, let's go back in. Hold on, there it is. Okay, I wanna make sure I'm running out of time and I wanna honor your time. So let's see. That, that, that. I think I've got most of it covered for you. Phew. I'm hoping I'm not rushing too terribly fast. Okay. So I've, I've gone back and forth a lot between the two. Um, Immersive Reader is also built into OneNote, which if you have not seen the Lunch and Learn on Immersive Reader that Daniel did a couple of weeks ago, it is on our YouTube channel. So please take a look at that because Immersive Reader is fabulous. It's built into websites. It's built in a lot of places. So it is something definitely to check out. Um, let's see one of these that I have done. Um, on this one, this uh, OneNote for Windows 10, one of the features that I do like about it are these previews. So on the pages, if you have something placed on there, it gives you a little sneak peek of what's on there. So that's kind of a nice feature. So on here, I had put the, um, this box here. So it kind of gives you a little picture of what's on that page. And so I do like that about this feature. Um, okay, so since this was something we did, if I go up here to replay, this is something that's not in the other version. And I may not have selected enough of it. I'll just have to tell you about it. <laughs> it's going to show you step-by-step step what took place on that page in order of how things were placed on that page. Maybe this one. Let's see, let's try that one. I want everything, of course. So it's telling you everything that actually took place on there. Um, hide authors, if you're sharing a notebook and people are contributing to a page, then it's going to, let me take that off, it's going to give you a line next to the things that they contributed and put their initials on there. So sometimes if a lot of people are contributing, it can get a little crowded. And so you can hide the authors so that that's not as crowded. I do want to show you. Um, couple more things if I can cram it in in the last seven minutes. Um, this little arrow right here is on all of the views, whether it's online or um, OneNote or OneNote for Windows 10. When this becomes too distracting to you, you can 
expand that. That way it takes away those distractions. And you can still click on this drop down arrow and get to any of your notebooks and sections and pages. And if you need your ribbon, you can click right here and it brings down your ribbon. So it just gets rid of some of that distraction when you're working on something. And so I did want to show that. And then you can just click on it again to come back into your regular area. And then I wanted to show Um, in history, you have page versions. So if you wanted to, to go back to views that you had done something, maybe it was you know, a couple of weeks ago, you could actually go into page versions and look at how it looked before. And you could even choose to go back to that version. So it would list all the versions um, that it had before this this version you're looking at and then you would just click on a version and then it would give you the option of keeping that version and getting rid of the others so, um, search in um, OneNote is phenomenal because you can search by the section you can search that page the section the section group, which is a classroom um, feature, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. You can search this notebook or you can search all of your notebooks. So you can do a keyword, you can do um, tags, which we didn't talk about. You can search throughout everything. It is phenomenal. And so if I did, um, I'm just gonna put math, you can see it just brings up everything. It tells you what notebook it's in, what section it's in. It will do everything. And so you can, here it's telling you it's on this page, math, and then it, again, what notebook it's in. It, it will search everywhere and be able to tell you what where to find that particular thing. You do have a recycle bin just for your notebooks. So if you delete a page or a section or a notebook, it's there. Again, that right click will help you with, with everything because you have those hidden menus. You can delete sections, you can delete pages, you can change colors of, of the tabs or or the notebooks by going into that hidden menu. So you can go in here and you can change the color. Maybe you want it to be blue or you want it to be this red color. You can do that. Um, you can move them around just by dragging them. Same thing with your pages. You can drag them around. You can password protect a section. So if you are in a notebook that you've shared with somebody, maybe you're working on a project, but there's one area you don't want them to look into, you can password protect a section. And so it gives you the option of setting a password, but you must remember that password because there's no way to recover it if you forget that password. So, but you can password protect um, your sections. So that's a really nice feature as well. And I am going to have to stop here real, real quickly. This help um, link right here is going to take you to those resources that I had in my PowerPoint. So you aren't going to miss out on that. Um, I'm just going to very quickly remind you that all of these recordings that we have for our Lunch and Learn and for our Tech Bytes are on our um, YouTube channel. So even today's um, YouTube, uh, sorry, today's Lunch and Learn video is already uploaded on our Tech Bytes channel. And what else do I need to share with you? I think that's it. So there's today's Lunch and Learn video. And last but not least, where did it go? <laughs>
if you need anything as you start playing with um, with your OneNote, which I really hope that you do, please don't hesitate to reach out. As I said, I've used this for years. It is my favorite tool that Microsoft has. It can be incorporated in Teams. It is a phenomenal feature. And again, they're going to be merging these so they're not quite as confusing to go bouncing back and forth between the two desktop apps. And so that will make it a little bit easier. But if you have any questions whatsoever, my email address is right here on the screen. And if you would like to unmute and ask me any questions, please feel free. I don't mind sticking around, but I did want to honor your time and our hour is up. And so I wanted to finish with that. And so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close, uh, stop the recording. But if you have any questions, please, by all means, I am here for you if you would like to ask me any questions. But otherwise, I'm going to stop the recording for now. So thank you for that, for joining us for OneNote, the wonders of OneNote.